Hello everyone, here we are back for week three, going strong. I hope you are all doing well. I wanted to, I wanted our first video for this week to talk about the episode of Spongebob uh, that I had given you to watch last week. Um, by now you should have uh, watched that episode and also posted in the discussion thread uh, from week two. So yeah, I just read through um, everyone's posts there and I want to address some of the things that I saw coming up a number of times that, um, as well as give you my take um, on that episode and then kind of look at the, the bigger picture of like what, what I want us to take away from doing this uh, uh, little exercise by with this uh, with this episode. So first of all, um, I'm, I'm sure you guys were probably surprised uh, to see that we're watching Spongebob, uh, especially after the, the very serious, very academic readings that I, that I gave you uh, to read for homework, those very difficult essays that I'm going to talk about uh, in my videos that I'm going to post uh, later in the day on Monday. Uh, so don't worry, I will talk all about those. Um, but yeah, so then you saw that uh, you had to watch an episode of Spongebob. Um, I hope that that was a pleasant surprise. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, it's a pretty good episode, not bad. Uh, some of the reasons that I wanted to watch that. Uh, one, I, I, I think it's it, it's interesting to see, like, because whenever we've done literary analysis, whenever we've written essays uh, about pieces of art for school, it's always, like, Shakespeare or, you know, Of Mice and Men or at least, like, classic literature, right? Like, the most, sometimes the most, like, highbrow, serious, you know, world historical uh, literature, um, the titans, um you know, of, of writing novels or plays or whatever. And I think that that can be annoying and exhausting. And I, I cause, cause it's like, we, we all like art, you know? And that's always one of the things that's weird to me about like the, the position of, of reading uh, fiction of different kinds in school is that like, at the end of the day, we all like stories. We all like certain kinds of art. Maybe now people like TV shows and movies more. Um, but they have a lot of things in common, you know, with fiction. And, and I think, like, I don't know. I find it hard to believe that all of us hate every kind uh, of, of of fiction, that, that there's no novel or play that you might like. I think there's always something. Um, but so I, I wanted to, us to kind of analyze this episode of SpongeBob just to show that you can do literary analysis for things that are good or fun, you know, for, for cartoons or uh, comic book movies or uh, what whatever action movies. Um, stuff like that. That's some of my favorite literary analysis is to do it about things that we wouldn't normally um, or, or or maybe that some people don't think are like worthy of criticism. You know, a lot of people would be like, oh, well, why don't you analyze Spongebob? What a waste of time. It's a cartoon. Um, but but I think it's uh, interesting and also accurate to kind of find messages in art, um, in all of art. So, yeah. What I really wanted us to do with the SpongeBob episode was that, that so last uh, week we were talking about what is literary analysis? That's the question we were asking. We looked at the Pokemon essay. We said that it's making an argument about the message a piece of art is sending, right? So uh, what we're doing with the SpongeBob episode, I basically had you guys do this, right? W what you did in that discussion thread was literary analysis. That's what we're going to be trying to do. Um, I just want to try to make this as clear as possible. What it means to analyze the message and to make an argument and to back that up with evidence, right? So hopefully you got a sense of that. All right, so I wanna go through the episode here, give you some some of my takes on it. Uh, so I'm just looking back at my notes here. I guess I'm just gonna, gonna kinda go chronologically. Um, so I kind of set up the topic being like going on strike and workers' rights, you know? I, I kind of framed that with my questions, uh, but I don't think I'm imposing that on the episode. I think if you watch this episode, you go, oh yeah, this, this is about going on strike, right? And once we notice that, once we realize, okay, something's going on here with the idea of workers and going on strike, then we can move more towards an argument by, by looking into like, is it showing us that striking is good and worth it and effective? Or is it showing us that going on strike is ineffective and a waste of time and bad, you know? And then we can make an argument on either of those sides, right? Um, so the first thing that I kind of noticed was, uh, and this is true for the whole series of SpongeBob, I think a lot of the things that we see in this episode could be generalized more for the whole series, and I do find that interesting, but uh, Krabs as kind of a caricature of a greedy boss, right? Like, Krabs is absurdly uh, greedy and, and money-grubbing, right? Uh, he's, he's fining them at the beginning, that uh, he gives them fines for things like breathing and existing and standing, 
Um, he finds SpongeBob extra for tying his shoe, right? Um, so that's just absurd on its face, right? So, so number one, I think it kind of puts us in that case. So one of the questions I asked was, whose side are we on in the episode? And I think in that initial moment, we kind of have to be on SpongeBob and Squidward's side because look at how absurd Krabs is being, right? The things that that he's trying to find them for and not pay them, and and SpongeBob's happy to do it, right? He gives them like twenty bucks or whatever. Uh, so he, SpongeBob doesn't get paid; he's paying Krabs to work, you know. Um, another thing that I noticed. Uh, and this is, I think, maybe really important, and, and I, I saw this come up in the discussion, but maybe not enough, or maybe not as much as it's, it's, it's warranted, but the idea that, that Spongebob just doesn't understand anything that Squidward's talking about. And then later on, we see how really no one understands what Squidward's talking about. So, like, Squidward, you know, he approaches Spongebob about, about going on a strike, and Spongebob's like, yeah, great, let's do it, sounds awesome. And then, you know, we realize that SpongeBob has no idea what a strike is uh, because he, he then goes to Mr. Krabs and he's like, Mr. Krabs, we're going to go on strike. Um, and then, of course, Krabs is not going to be happy about that. And then SpongeBob, um, you know, starts sobbing when he does find out that it means that uh, he's not going to be able to work or whatever. So that's, uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to come back to this a little bit later, but this whole idea of SpongeBob just not understanding anything that's happening, really, um, we see it again and again with the, when he's making the signs, and, and he says, I love the Krusty Krab, or whatever is, is his uh, a picket sign, a strike sign. Um, so uh, let's let's keep that in the back of our minds, just this idea of Squidward having this very, and, and Squidward's like labor rhetoric, right? His, his rhetoric is very... Um, I don't know, like like highfalutin or like fancy or I, I don't know. Maybe it's just kind of old timey at this point, you know, because so much of labor rhetoric we associate with like the fifties or like times when unions were actually really strong, um, unlike now, you know. Uh, so yeah, Squidward has his labor rhetoric about the the noxious greed of the businessmen and and all these things and. Um, yeah, SpongeBob just doesn't understand it, right? Like he uh, sympathizes with it. He's like, yes, totally. But then he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so we'll come back to that. Um, another thing that I saw people... So so I guess the idea of people not understanding what's happening with the labor stuff, I guess that would be more on the side of, of it so showing striking as being ineffective or not worth it or, or bad, right? Uh, another important thing is that they keep on giving crabs more customers. I saw a lot of people bring this up, and that was great. Um, because it's just kind of the most obvious way that we can see the episode showing striking as not really working, is that... Squidward makes his speeches, they do their picket signs, they're out in front, and, and they do get a crowd, and the crowd's sympathetic to them, right? And the crowd listens to Squidward's speech, and they like it, and then they all go to the Krusty Krab, right? And, and, and it keeps ending with those Squidward getting trampled, and Krabs getting all the customers, and Krabs comes out, and he says, oh, you know, you boys should have gone on strike sooner. Um, I, I would have told you to if I knew it would give me this much money. Uh, so it gives Krabs more comfortable. So that, again, would have to be in the column of, of the, sh the episode showing that striking doesn't really work, not that effective. Um, but then another thing that you guys uh, picked up on, which was really good, a place where this kind of turns is the, when Krabs approaches Squidward to get him back, when Krabs like, gives up, essentially, after one day, right? Um, but I think this is kind of complicated how this works, because I think a lot of you pointed to this and said, well, ultimately, the episode is on Squidward and Spongebob's side because Mr. Krabs gives up. He agrees to, to give Squidward his demands and, and uh, you know, come to an agreement uh, to bring them back to work, right? So a few things about this. Uh, number one, uh, Squidward also gives up after one day, right? That, that's the whole point of the thing when Squidward's at home and, and it's, you know, forever, forever, and his eyes are all big. And then he has, uh, you know, the, 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 the dream uh, where... Uh, you know, which is one of my favorite things. It's one of the funniest parts of the episode when he's having the dream and, the, and they're all old and SpongeBob's floating around his head and he's going, hey, Squidward, hey, Squidward, and hitting him with the, 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 his cane or whatever. Um, so Squidward also gives up, right? And Mr. Krabs, it's true, must have given up slightly earlier. Because Squidward, if you remember, is is leaving his house. Um, at, it's, it's, night, it's the night now of, of that day. And he's leaving his house to go to Mr. Krabs and tell him that he gives up and that he'll come back to work. But as soon as he opens his door, Mr. Krabs is already there to try to get him back, right? So um, I guess we could put this in the column of the episode showing striking to be good or effective because Mr. Krabs does give up first, even if it's only by, I don't know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. <laughs> um, so it's not like a resounding uh, endorsement of, you know, workers being able to hold out longer than management, but uh, but they do hold out longer, even if it's by a very slim margin. 
Um, okay, and then we have, so a, a lot of people, I think, kind of viewed that, it kind of stopped there, we're like, well, at the beginning, um, the Strike is helping Krabs, but then eventually Krabs gives up and rehires them, so the episode shows striking as being, like, good and worth it. But I wonder if the ending of the episode complicates this. Um, and, and some people also uh, w w when, uh, pointed to this as well. Because at the actual end of the episode, after SpongeBob destroys the Krusty Krab, and we'll talk in a second about, uh, you know, why he does that and how that fits into the message. But uh, SpongeBob destroys, destroys the Krusty Krab, and then, um, yeah, Mr. Krab says, you know, after his body falls apart in a hilarious way, um, he says, you know, you'll have to work for me forever to pay this off. And then we get one of the famous uh, uh, SpongeBob title cards with the French announcer, One Eternity Later. And, uh, and then there, there are skeletons working, right? So I guess the implication would, would be that they worked forever and never got paid anything. <laughs> and they are now skeletons uh, who are still working in, in the afterlife of some sort. So, like, obviously that ending is supposed to be a joke, you know? Like, obviously it's played for, like, a final laugh, you know, to end the episode on. Um, but the implication would be that SpongeBob destroys the restaurant and then they have to pay it off by working for free, essentially. You know, and there's unanswered questions there. How could they continue to pay their rent or their mortgage or whatever? Um, if they, or, or how could they buy food <laughs> if they're just not getting paid anymore? Maybe maybe they paid half their paycheck and they kept half of it. I don't know, but I don't know if that'd be enough to live on. It doesn't really seem like it would be. Um, so if we look at it that way, the ending, at the end of the episode, they're actually worse off than they were at the beginning, right? If, if at the beginning of the episode they're getting fined for this absurd stuff like... Uh, you know, uh, breathing and existing. At the end, they're just not getting paid at all or something, or they have some kind of arrangement where they have to pay for the restaurant to be rebuilt. Um, does Mr. Krabs have insurance? I don't know. We don't get into that. <laughs> that's uh, that's out, outside the purview of, uh, you know, uh, of SpongeBob, right? They don't tell us that. Uh, but yeah, so, so if we look at it that way, we would have to say, well, the ultimate position of the show is that it, it doesn't really work because at the end of the episode, it didn't work for them. That, 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 I'm kind of convinced by that argument. That's, it's not, I'm not saying that's the only uh, way to see it and that there's not ways to argue against that, but that seems pretty convincing to me just because it's kind of the end of the episode. So what happens at the end? I don't know. Do we give that more weight? I don't know. I kind of feel like we should, but, it, but is that like a random thing to just be like, oh, well, that's how it ends. So that has to be the message. Um, but I think we can get more, maybe more nuanced than this though. Maybe this is too simple. Maybe I'm oversimplifying it, right? Because if there's evidence and there's counter evidence, can we find a way to account for uh, like all of it, kind of? So I, I think what I what I was trying to think about this. All right, now I want to return to the idea of no one understanding like what Squidward is talking about, because that's the reason that, that like why does SpongeBob destroy the restaurant and then secure their um, you know eternity of, of not getting paid? Uh, which is a really crucial thing in the episode, right? Because SpongeBob destroys the restaurant, their strike doesn't work really. You know, it would have worked if not for SpongeBob destroying the restaurant because Squidward uh, had come to a new agreement that presumably was better for them. And why does SpongeBob destroy the restaurant? Because he doesn't understand that Squidward is speaking in metaphors. When, when Squidward says, you know, we're going to saw the tables of big business and we're going to uh, gnaw at the ankles of, of industry and, and whatever, we're going to smash uh, whatever. Um, SpongeBob just takes all that stuff literally, right? Of course, Squidward's being metaphorical. What he's trying to say is, you know, we will unite and we'll uh, whatever, we'll get more money from these greedy uh, business owners, you know? That's basically what Squidward's saying. But, but he's using these, these like, metaphors, and, and SpongeBob just takes it all literally, so he actually saws the tables, he actually rips up the floorboards, and he destroys it. So I, I feel like this point about people not understanding what he's saying, it just gets repeated so many times. Whenever we talk about um, literature in this class, especially when we start talking about poetry and stuff, we're going to really be looking a lot at repetition. Um, because, like, the, the starting point for any analysis of any piece of art it's just noticing stuff, you know, like like noticing something that, that happens and then being like, well, what does that mean? Or what's the message of that? Or why does that happen? And I think repetition is one of the way that we, is a good starting point for noticing stuff. So I, I think an interesting thing, I didn't keep a full count, 
But I wonder how many times Squidward is talking about going on strike and, and why you have to do it and how it's necessary and all his like labor rhetoric, right? I wonder how many times when Squidward's doing that, SpongeBob and other people say they don't understand. Now, during Squidward's biggest speech, the most extended one where he has the megaphone and SpongeBob standing behind the pole, at least three times during that pretty short speech do people say, I don't understand this. I have no idea what he's talking about. There's um, the, 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 the two fish in the crowd, who I love, I love their voices, um, who while Squidward's, you know, he's doing his thing, the noxious greed of big business and we will take it back for the little workers. And, and, and these two guys are like, hey, what's this guy talking about? I don't know, but he's getting a megaphone. <laughs> so there's that time where they have, to, they have to tell you, hey, no one gets this, no one understands, it's not working. And then they go to SpongeBob and he's behind the, the telephone pole, right? And, and he says, uh, wow, I don't know what Squidward's talking about, but he sure sounds convincing. So nobody knows what this is, what this means. No one gets it. Oh, and then the other one is uh, Squidward says something about workers being like cheated out of what they're owed or something, or we we have been lied and cheated to. And then the, like the, the old grandma like turns to her husband and slaps him because she thinks that he's cheated on her, right, and lied to her. That's another misunderstanding. That one I, I think is a little a little more subtle or something, but that's also a fundamental misunderstanding of what Squidward's talking about. So it's like, it just comes up like, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, maybe 10 times throughout the episode when Squidward goes on one of his uh, speeches like that, where they just, again, they hit you over the head with no one gets it, no one understands. So I think on, on this viewing, I've seen this episode so many times now because I always teach it. On this viewing, I, I think the argument, maybe maybe the thesis that, that I would want to push if I was going to write an essay about this is something like, um, like going on strike would work but no one gets it or knows how to do it or like that regular people don't get it like going on strike as, as, a, as a thing like because what squidward does right uh quitting and then uh, uh mr krabs going to hire them back and agreeing to their demands the strike works on that level in the episode right but the problem is that spongebob and none of the regular people that he that squidward's trying to win to his side understand any of it <laughs> So it's like, yeah, like striking would work, but like no one cares about you. No one, no one gives a shit. Like, like Squidward says that at one point, right? He says like, you know, no, no one cares about the working man as long as they can get their instant gratification. Um, so, I, so I don't know, maybe something like that, that like going on strike is good. It could be effective. It, it is sometimes effective, but ultimately no one's going to know what you're talking about. No one's going to support you. So at the end, you're going to, you know, end up in a worse position than where you started. Maybe that would be my thesis. So, so you can see like kind of how nuanced and specific that thesis has to be, right? Um, maybe we can't just say the episode shows striking is good. The episode shows striking is bad. Maybe the real thesis for this, the real argument that we would want to make is the episode shows that striking can work, uh, but only in certain conditions and not right now because no one's going to understand what you're talking about or something like that. So that would, I think, be probably my argument. This. Not that it's the only argument, not that you couldn't argue against it, uh, but yeah, I think that's kind of kind of what I was thinking here. Um, I just have a couple more things I wanted to get to. Some other things I saw you guys posting in the discussion. Um, I can't read my own handwriting here. <laughs> uh, oh, a lot of people were saying that. Sorry, <laughs> a lot of people were saying that the episode shows that like sometimes workers need to stand up for themselves. I saw a lot of people saying something like that. That. Like it's it's important to speak out if you're being treated wrong, and 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 then uh, some of those people, not everyone, but some of those people were also saying, but the episode's more on the side of Mr. Krabs uh, because of the ending or whatever. And I'm wondering how those two ideas can go together. You know, can we say the message is that workers should stand up for themselves if in the episode when they do that they end up being punished at the end? You know. So, so I was, I was kind of wondering uh, what people were thinking um, or, or the, the evidence or explanation you guys would have for the idea that the episode shows that, like, you should speak up for your rights or, or something like that. I was just a little curious about that. And I think the ending, I wonder if the ending negates that, if the ending says, well, you shouldn't actually speak up because you'll just get screwed over at the end of the day. I'm not sure, though. Another thing, you guys didn't really bring this up, but I just wanted to address it real quick, um, is, like, the author's in intention. That's something people will always bring up when I talk about this in a class, is, like, well, you know, the people at Nickelodeon weren't trying to send this message about going on strike. And I'm going to talk about this more when we, when we uh, discuss the death of the author essay, but I'll just say that, for me, I just don't really care about that, you know? 
Like, I, I, I agree that the people who made this probably don't really give a shit about striking one way or the other. They just wanted to make an episode that was funny. Um, but to me, I think that the message can be there regardless of whether or not, like, the author wanted it uh, to be. Um, I also saw some people saying that, like, uh, some people, like, rightly focusing on crabs giving up, you know, and, and going to try to hire Squidward back. I do think that's a really important part of the episode. But I, I, um, I saw some people saying that, like, oh, well, well, the episode's more on the side of Squidward because Krabs gives up and tries to get them back. Um, and again, I'm just wondering how the ending fits in with that. You know, does the ending negate that? Is the episode ultimately on the side of Krabs because the end, at the ending he gets what he wants and Squidward and SpongeBob don't? Um, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that that's definitely the, the correct way to look at it, but I'm, I'm just asking the question, right? Just asking the question. Does the ending kind of throw a wrench into that understanding of it? Another thing that's weird about the strike is like, like we can say the strike works, right? Because Krabs gives up and tries to hire them back. But I think it's it's interesting. Like, why does Krabs give up? I think what he says basically is that he thinks the teenagers he hired are annoying. <laughs> so it's not like the idea of a strike is that it should cost the owner money, you know, and that's why they would give up and accede to your demands. Because, uh, you know, if it's a factory and the workers stop making the stuff, then there's nothing to sell and the owner can't make money, right? That's kind of the idea of a strike. Um, but in the episode, Krabs does fine economically, but he's just like annoyed by the teenagers because they, they won't leave him alone. <laughs> that means. So that was just one last thing there. But okay, so the big takeaway here, um, as much as I do love this episode and, and care deeply about the message it sends, uh, what I really want to emphasize is that this is what literary analysis is. Looking at a piece of art like this um, and having an argument for what the message is, and and you could and there's multiple. There's not one right answer. Like I said before, um, you could say it shows that striking is good uh, be because Krabs gives up, and and uh, because the people agree with Squidward, even if they don't really understand, they still do cheer for him, and and they do see themselves on his side. So you could look at those things and say, well, show striking is good, and then you could look at the ending. Um, and, you know, uh, the fact that no one understands uh, and say that it shows that striking is bad. Um, or the thesis that I tried to say of something like uh, the episode shows that striking could be good or could work, uh, but unfortunately no one will understand, uh, so it's doomed to failure. And I think you can see, like, how specific of a thesis that would be and the evidence that you would have to use to kind of back that up. So that's what literary analysis is. That's what we're going to be doing when we start reading um, some short stories. I think, I think this week we're probably going to be reading the first one. And then we'll start applying a lot of the stuff we've been talking about, about what literary analysis is and, and how to do it and everything. Okay, that's long enough of a video for now. Talk to you soon.